Hello everyone, welcome to the video session of Introduction to Event Management. Today we will be focusing on the part 2 of module 3, which comprises of the topics like expense reimbursement, travel arrangements and negotiating tactics. So let's have a look on the first topic that is expense reimbursement. The idea is that the organizer pre-finances the event. The costs are reimbursed after the event upon the submission of all the original receipts. So what kind of cost can be reimbursed? First is the trainers and the speakers who are involved in the event. The material used for the event that can be the printing cost, renting for projections, technical equipment as well as the promotional material. The food and the beverage included in the event. Accommodation charges. Now, if the event is lasting for more than one day, then it is important to take care of the accommodation facilities. And the transportation. It can be public transport or it can be private transport. It can include train flights as well as the private cars sponsored by the event, companies or clients. The next is travel arrangements. Now, it includes the traffic marshalling, parking arrangements, signposting, public transportation and emergency access which is needed to be planned in advance carefully since they involve the public safety and create the visitors and performers first and last impressions which partly influence the quality of the event experience also. So these are the following aspects regarding the traffic marshalling and signposting that should be taken into consideration. The first one is working with the police and motoring organizations about the signs of routes to the event site, the movement of traffic and access of emergency service. The next is contacting with public authorities and the coach organizations regarding the additional arrangements for shuttle services, remote, park, remote car parking and the train capacities. Next is calculating a sufficient number of stewards who will be available for marshalling the traffic flows on the site and directing the parking of vehicles. And lastly, a system of entrance gate numbers and car parking numbers along with that shuttle bus stops, emergency vehicles and motoring organization points, parking spots for taxis, telephones as well as sanitary accommodations at the parking areas must be set up effectively. The next topic is negotiating tactics. Now, negotiation between the vendor and the event manager is very much important whenever you are going to search or hire for venue. The first is start with big four requirements. At minimum, the four pieces of information that are most critical in starting the venue negotiations are budget, event dates, headcount, and space requirements that can be your occupancy or accessibility in the event. Next step is bonus insider tip. Now, many planners feel that initially divulging your budget puts you at a disadvantage in venue recognition and negotiations. So, you can always say something like we are still working upon the budget and will come back for the negotiation of the venue hiring. Next is be realistic about your headcount. Don't estimate high when it comes to your headcount. So, a high headcount will lead to a high estimate for food and beverage and a larger reservation of a room block. And since most venue owners will ask for the minimum for both of them, whether the how many people are there and how much food you will require. Next is provide clear timelines and expectations. Now, we have seen event lead times shorten dramatically in the last five to six years. And as the event turnaround times get shorter, you may have less time to negotiate. So when you start the process, you provide the venue with a timeline that includes the date when you need a proposal, when you will provide a counter proposal or a feedback and your target date for signing a contract with the venue owner. This makes your timeline and intentions clear to all the parties involved in event management. The next is get the quotes from multiple venues. Even if you already know the venue you want to use, get multiple quotes from comparable venues so you can compare the cost and make sure that you are getting a good value. Don't be pressurized by the sales 
tactics. Now, once you have set your budget and your schedule for booking a venue, you should not let any sales ploys move off your course. Often, venues will say that they have another party that is interested in booking the same place at the same time or there is special pricing or discounts available on the specific dates and will get expired after certain days. So, you should not get pressurized by those sales tactics. The next is consider non-hotel venues. Now, food and beverage and other ancillary costs are often much higher at the hotels and even though non-hotel venues may charge you for event space. So, the savings you will see from using an outside caterer and other vendors may make it worth it to hold the event away from the hotel. So, don't consider hotel venues rather than you can go far away from that. Next is treat the venue manager as your partner. Now the venue staff will be the biggest asset in making sure that your event gets successful. So always make them feel special and make them feel as a partner of the event management company. Look at the things from the venue's perspective. Now the decisions that the venue or hotel managers are making are often driven by the two primary conditions. First is booking the venue full every day of the year and gaining the maximum revenue from the event they host. So you should not fault them for these goals but should instead understand that this is their starting position and use these things for your advantage. Next is show the proof of your value to the venue. If you have held a similar kind of event in the past at the same venue, you should provide a proof to the venue owner and ask for the discount. Next is have a 2-3 date options in mind and be flexible on selecting the dates. Because venues want it to be booked solid at all the time. So they may have open dates on their calendar that they want to fill. So by providing the venue owner with 2 or 3 uh, options, two or three date options and being open-minded about the event date, you can get more discount on the dates they are providing. Consider supply and demand. Certain types of venues may supply be in higher demand than other venues and so they command higher prices and aren't likely to negotiate. The next is book multiple events with the same venue or the chain or the same brand. A great way to lower your event venue cost is to agree or to host some or all of your yearly events or meetings at a single venue. Or you could book your annual event for multiple years at a single venue. This can lower down your cost. Next is Clarify what you and your staff can do and cannot do. So many venues have a contract and complementary services or packages with the third party companies or unions to carry out different types of tasks and duties which your staff cannot carry on. The next is use a guest room bookings as a leverage. Now with the net profit margin as high as 70%, guest rooms are the most profitable source of the revenue. So you can use those booking as a leverage as well as you can use food and beverage spend as a leverage. So the second biggest profit center for many of the venue owners is food and beverage revenues. And so larger spend here can also help you to negotiate on other expenses. Next, you use your total spend numbers to negotiate. Now the venue manager knows how much profit they need to make for each event and is always aware about the overall value and budget of the event. So they break down all these into the line items because it's frankly harder for you to negotiate item by item than it is overall cost. You must always customize your event menu. So don't just accept the preset menu from the venue owner. Sub out the certain items that are less expensive and you can customize your own venue. Be aware of the required vendor list. Some venues have a list of the vendors that you must choose from. And from these vendors prices tend to be much higher than if you use your own 
non approved vendors because the approved vendors are often paying for the privilege of being approved by the venue and have a tie up with that venue owner always negotiate the audio visual rentals now av rentals are often the most marked up item in a venue's proposal as up to 90% of av cost is pure profit to the venue because this item is in tied to a fixed cost or like labor cost next is to make sure that you have a favorable payment schedule so whenever possible never pay the full amount up front negotiate so you pay a fixed percentage up front and then back hold the rest of the payments and this counts double for any registration or ticketed events so when you will be seeing most of your revenues in the weeks leading up to the event you want to float as little as possible in covering the hard costs like food or beverages room rentals of your event and last is to make sure that everything you discussed is mentioned in the contract everything or every activity you are going to perform with that vendor or with that venue owner is is completely and determined in the contract so this was all about the expense reimbursement travel arrangement as well as the negotiation tactics involved in event management so hereby we are done with the module 3 and we'll be starting with module 4 in the upcoming video session thank you